Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. The Church of Nice and Kumbaya in group hugs is in full session, with cardinals telling the faithful that to be a good Catholic, you must not defend the faith because doing so is polarizing. If that sounds nuts to you, well, it should because it contradicts Christ's commands to us, backed by his famous warning against the consequences of lukewarmness of faith. But when cardinals are telling us not to be so divisive and meany, they're just following Francis's always questionable lead. Case in point, Francis had a general audience late last week, and he gave some typically bad advice to those in attendance. When faced with this hard decisions, just follow your heart. Quote, This is what we must learn, to listen to our own heart, to know what is happening, what decisions to make. To make a judgment on a situation, one must listen to one's own heart. We listen to the television, the radio, the mobile phone. We are experts at listening. But I ask you, do you know how to listen to your heart? Do you stop to ask, but how is my heart? Is it satisfied? Is it sad? Is it searching for something? To make good decisions, you need to listen to your heart. <laughs> End quote. Thanks, Disney. Our hearts often want some pretty bad things, honestly. He does try to qualify that by saying that we should read the lives of the saints for examples of this. And reading the lives of the saints is good. But the weird thing is, the hearts that the saints follow was our Lord's sacred heart, our Lady's immaculate heart, and the most chaste heart of St. Joseph. But the saints really didn't follow their own heart. And the immaculate and chaste hearts are hovering over this story today because living in purity, in accordance with our state in life, is quite possibly the most polarizing topic in the church today. The modernists are really setting us up for something nasty in the near future in the church and telling all of us who are raising the alarm bells now to calm down and be good Catholics who don't get offended at everything just because it, whatever we're bothered by happens to violate the faith and the moral laws of the faith. One of the men who is on the short list for the papacy after Pack a Papa Francis either allegedly retires soon or more likely continues to cling to power until his iron grip finally fails him is Cardinal Matteo Zuppi of Bologna, who warned against the polarization in the church and how it's a poisonous way to react to things in the world. And you know, that's literally the opposite warning that our Lord gave to us in the Gospels when our blessed Lord told us that he would set us all against the world. In fact, Jesus was pretty clear about this when he said in the Gospel of Matthew, quote, Do not think that I came to send peace upon earth. I came not to send peace, but the sword. For it came to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother before me, or more than me, is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me, is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not up his cross and followeth me, is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that shall lose his life for me shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. End quote. That was from the uh, Dewey Rames translation, which is the favorite translation on average of English-speaking traditional Catholics. And it was, in fact, the very first English translation Bible ever published, beating the King James Version by a year to publication. But Jesus' words are pretty obvious here. The gospel is itself polarizing. Now, when a cardinal who is widely considered to be among the front runners for the papacy tells us that polarization is bad, it's meany, it's poisonous, yet the gospel tells us that, well, frankly, that polarization is just the natural consequence of following Jesus and doing what he told us to do, what does that tell you? Let's see what the cardinal has to say about this. Quote, Everybody loses when politics tries to poison church life and when church members use the logic of politics, said an Italian cardinal. That is objectively true. To poison ecclesial relations with the logic of politics is making trouble. And this is not just a problem in Italy. It is also evident in the marked political polarization seen in the American church, Cardinal Matteo Zuppi of Bologna, president of the Italian Bishops Conference, told the Vatican newspaper L'Osservatore Romano. But wherever politics has used pseudo-theological or spiritual categories to contaminate ecclesial life, 
everyone has lost in the end, he said in an interview published September 3rd. We have to pay close attention to this issue, and not just because of manipulation from the outside, but also because of the divisions within, the Cardinal said. Trouble results from falling into these traps, for example. A false conflicts between the social and spiritual dimensions, or the often contrived divisions on ethical issues, he added. The problem of polarization, Cardinal Zuppi said, is everywhere. Ruling supreme on every issue, big and small. It seems like a quick and easy way to respond to the many complexities in the world by just taking a side without needing to think or tackle too many questions, he said. Instead, we have to face complexity without fear to ask ourselves questions, especially questions concerning who, that is, putting the human person at the center of the discussion, he said. When it comes to ethical issues, he said, we cannot simply repeat little lectures from the past. Instead, we must find new words for new questions. To be very frank, if the world is heading in the other direction on ethical issues, it certainly means that we must not conform to or say what the world wants to hear, but that we must know how to tell the eternal truths in today's culture or terminology. Otherwise, we repeat a truth that has become hard to accept, end quote. And I, you can tell by my tone, I was kind of making fun of him a little bit there, but let's be clear. Cardinal Zuppi may be the most dangerous of the men who would be a de facto Francis II because he's much smoother than Francis and doesn't come off as a buffoon like Togley does or a thug like Supich does or just an imbecile like Roach does. But he was attacking traditional Catholics in that piece. Using Francis's favorite line of attack, that tradition is merely an ideology, but he never mentioned traditionalists explicitly, not one time. That was what his talk about the American church was, though. And instead, he preached encounters with the evils of the world. But pro tip here, don't dialogue with Satan. It's a terrible idea. Even Francis gets that much right most of the time. Don't dialogue or try to accompany the evils of the world, though. We have to stand against them in witness for Christ. And remember, in that same chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, that I started with, our Lord tells us that those who don't bear witness to him will be cast away. Always keep that in mind. There is really nothing more polarizing in the church these days than the German synodal way. J.D. Flynn over at the Pillar Catholic did everyone a real favor by watching the live proceedings of their, to put it mildly, rather incredibly important synodal meeting, where the bishops of the church were deciding whether the church in Germany was going to overturn her timeless teachings on the sins of the flesh and embrace the James Martin sin or not, and amazingly, by the grace of God, their attempt failed. The bishops needed 66% of the bishops of Germany to support the motion to overturn the church's inerrant teaching in the document they were working on and replace it with the teachings of the flesh from the world, and they only managed to get 61%, which means that they needed 5% more. That it also means that at least 61% of the Germans are actually literally heretics. At least 61% are, since we're really only talking about the Pastor Jimmy Martin issue here. That's reassuring. From Mr. Flynn's article on Pillar Catholic, we get this story, which, unfortunately, due to our host's own intolerance to the values of the Catholic faith, we have to play with the language just a little bit. But it'll be obvious here what I'm talking about. From Mr. Flynn's article, quote, Members of the German Synodal Way failed to pass on Thursday a resolution calling for a change in the church's approach to the ethics of the flesh. The resolution failed to gain enough support from bishops at a synodal meeting held this week in Frankfurt. More than two-thirds of participants in the Synodal Way process agreed to adopt a 30-page document entitled Life in Succeeding Relationships, the Principles of Renewed Ethics of the Flesh. Sounds like a college paper, really. But the resolution did not gain two-thirds of the Synodal Way's bishop participants, a requirement for the passage of any resolution. 61% of the participating German bishops were in favor of the resolution, according to initial German reports. 33 bishops in support of the motion, 3 abstained, and 21 bishops were against, enough to stop the resolution's passage. The text argued that, it will not be possible to reorient pastoral care without redefining the emphasis of the church's marital act and related teachings to a significant degree. It said it is urgently necessary to overcome some of the restrictions and questions of the 
desires of the flesh or for reasons of science of the flesh as well as theology. Theology, okay. The draft text also asserted that the pastor Jimmy Martin's sin, also expressed in Acts of the Flesh, is not a sin that causes a separation from God, and it is not to be judged as intrinsically bad, end quote. Again, that's all reassuring, I guess, isn't it? But remember, according to one of the men who may follow Francis onto the throne of Peter, polarization is bad. We should just be joyful and not angry that the gospel is being trampled and edited and revised to suit the needs of the world. Who needs uh, all that go forth and sin no more stuff? And we got Francis saying, who am I to judge? What's really incredible, but also not surprising simultaneously, is that German Bishop Botzing, the head of the German Synodal Way, is, well, he's disappointed in the outcome, and he promises to continue to fight the good fight to change the church's teaching into his own teaching. They won't have to work hard to convince a few other bishops to support their evil document, to put it mildly. So keep an eye on this channel for if and when they get their chance to formally apostatize over sins, that the Bible is unequivocal and not vague about in even the slightest way. But don't worry. If you've been pining for sins to be redefined as not sins, the most familiar German names in the church have promised to keep fighting. And they're using language to essentially bully the other German bishops to fall in line. And if there's anything the bishops of the church, well, that if there's anything they're known for these days, it's their uncanny ability to fold like a folding chair on moral issues. From the Pillar article, quote, some participants said that bishops opposing the document should have expressed their views during open debate, and others urged that future tallies at the assembly should take place on the record, with the move of each recorded by name. According to the Synodal Way's official social media accounts, Bishop George Botzing, president of the German Bishops' Conference, said he was, quote, personally disappointed with this. I couldn't see in the debate what the majorities would be like. That means for me, the practice of synodality has not yet gone far enough, Botzing said Thursday. Cardinal Reinhard Marx, former president of the Bishops' Conference, also said that he is, quote, very disappointed. The bishops must also publicly stand by their positions and should justify them, end quote. Yes, they should justify their decisions to not throw out the church's teaching. The solution to this is, of course, more synodality. At least they're finally admitting, though, that synodality is really just a means of normalizing sin, that the Bible and the church have always taught inerrantly crowd to heaven for vengeance, sins that God takes a rather dim view of, to put it mildly. Go look at some of the historical events in the Old Testament around that sin. But at least they're being honest about that, which begs the question, why should they remain in the church if they feel that way? They know that they are formal heretics, since the definition of a formal heretic is to knowingly deny with full consent of the will a teaching of the church. The moral code of the church is inerrant. It's dogmatic. Sacred scripture is inerrant. To deny the inerrancy of scripture is heresy, and it places you outside of the church. But then this happened. Just when we thought that maybe the German bishops would just take the loss for once, instead they do what people of their political bent always do when they lose. They had everyone cast their lot again, except this time they did it with the German public watching, the same German public that's been pressuring them to change church teaching. And guess what the result was? According to Dr. Hickson, the bishops who said no the first time submitted to the will of the public this time. At least all but eight of them did. And if we're talking about a government budget or a policy of the government of some kind, that might be one thing. We're talking about Catholic truth here, timeless truth, and not only on the James Martin sin either, but also on the ordination of women. From cath.net, quote, the feared worst case scenario could be averted for the time being. The text, which emphasizes the desire for women to be admitted to ordained offices and asks the Pope to examine the corresponding reform ideas at world level, achieved the necessary quorum of support, including among the bishops. After the announcement of the result, there was great relief among the members of the Synod, especially among the non-bishops. There was prolonged cheering and applause. Bishop Franz Josef Bode, one of the leaders of the forum responsible for the text, spoke of a quote-unquote historic step. 
Co-chair Dorothea Sattler added that it was the first time that a national bishops' conference had agreed to have the arguments for the exclusion of women from ordained offices reviewed, end quote. And remember, this was made possible by the generally Catholic public in Germany. Sometimes it's just, you know, very lonely being a traditional Catholic. It's also worth noting that before doing a public decision process and rejecting the closed-door results, Bishop Botzing had decided that, regardless of how the bishops decided, he was just going to take the recommendation to overturn Catholic teaching and present it to the Vatican's Synod on Synodality as the German contribution. And their recommendations are in near-perfect keeping with the vast majority of the, dios the diocesan synodal processes from around the Western world. To say that heresy is rampant in the church in our time is a bit of an understatement, I know, but what we're witnessing is an apostasy. Whether it's the great apostasy of biblical prophecy remains to be seen, but for now it's sufficient to say that we are witnesses to an apostasy in the church, being led from the very top of the church. And in these times, this apostasy does beg a very real but obvious question. What do you do to stay the course? What are your thoughts on that? How do people stay the course in our times? You will, without a doubt, see people in the comments expressing despair, or you'll meet them in real life. How do you stay the course? Sacred scripture likens our struggle in life to finishing the race, and that we must work out our salvation with fear and trembling. The stakes are very high, folks. That's why fear and trembling. Let me know what that means to you in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. As does sharing these messages on social media. That helps enormously as well. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.